uh, farm over in Venora, so like 35 miles away. Um, fifth generation farmer. Uh, we're doing no-till, uh, regenerative, and we kind of are using uh, cover crops, what I call green manure. Uh, most of you guys are probably from around here. You know that June 10th was a nice, uh, interesting time frame for everyone in Williston. They all got hail. So there was a photo I just kind of wanted to bring into that uh, kind of got in social media because we all kind of shot there. Well, this was June 10th at nighttime. Two people decided to canoe. I, did it make the paper, I think, too? I think it did, yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of fun. I wanted to throw it in there. Sorry about that. Nope, it's fine. Yeah. I'm going to talk about kind of like the questions I get of why we're switching to 100%. We're in the transitional stage. we got some organic, and we're getting all the way there. Uh, next year, in the fall, will be my last year with the sprayer. So I'm really looking forward to selling uh, health reasons, uh, it took us a long time to conceive a child and about, uh, it took us actually seven years In about year five, year four, we finally went to a doctor and found out like there was just some health things. And when the doctor called like, oh yeah, you can be, my wife can be put on pills. It won't heal her. Uh, you know, it just, you just kind of be taking pills the rest of your life. And she kind of said, well, is there anything I can do? And he's like, well, if you don't want to take pills, you can just uh, eat certain foods and it'll kind of maintain it. She said, fine, she didn't take the pills. And she actually did a lot of research and found out that it is possible with what she had going on that you can heal yourself with the strict diet of eating foods. So that was kind of one of the uh, first steps of going in my farming world, chemical, fertilizer, going, okay, I, I think there's something we can do here. Uh, soil health. You know, I look at my fields today in the normal way of farming and you dig the soil and you just don't see much. You just see crap, dirt, nothing really in there. So I was like, there's got to be something else. And that's when I started getting online and talking to farmers, trying to talk to organic. Kind of came across something called like regenerative farming. Use a lot of cover crops, building the soil health, you know, bringing the organic matter back, biomasses, everything. And I was like, this is where I kind of want to go. And the big one, is the chemical and the fertilizer cost they keep climbing and especially next year they're going to get ferocious but i just kept saying i work my butt off all year and the chemical and the fertilizer people they seem to be taking our money and then of course i'm going all right if i want to farm the way i'm farming now what do i got to do i need to buy a possible new sprayer one of my neighbors bought a new sprayer and he told me how much he paid for it and I was like, geez, Louise, I, I don't think I want to go that route. Um, and I've bought a lot of land the last couple of years to where I had to buy the thing called the grain beggar. I couldn't afford grain bins. And I started looking into grain bins cost. I'm like, that's going to be a quarter million dollars. Or yeah, a quarter million dollars to $350,000. And of course, steel keeps climbing. So between the sprayer of a new sprayer and grain bins, I just kind of said, I think I'm going to be out because I don't have the money and I don't want to take a loan on just those two pieces of equipment. So kind of one of the reasons why I also bowed out. And the last of farming, of love for the farming. You know, you just sit there and you wonder, what are you kind of doing to the soil for health? What are you kind of doing to the people that eat your food or animals? And you sit in the tractor all day and you start kind of thinking, what can be done differently? So those are kind of the reasons why we're getting out. We believe we can do it organically, regen organic. Uh, it took me a couple of years to kind of figure it out. Uh, organically, a lot of people tell, like this last guy tells, nothing wrong with that. But I kind of, I just didn't like to turn the soil over because I kind of said it kind of undoes the purpose for the bad slang term. You get an organic as well. You turn the soil over, you wreck the soil, you don't make it any better. There's got to be something better. So the funniest thing is in 2018, I was still in a depression. I'm going to go organic. I got it to the soil. There's no other way. Got to control the weeds. And that's kind of like where I just was like, I don't know. Last year was really interesting. Last fall, I did a thousand acres that I was going to transition this year. And I kept telling myself, I'm going to take my pro till in 2021 and I'm going to just till the soil and then seed with my no till drill. So I had to kill the weeds. But I kind of got out of that mindset, started learning about the regen. And uh, we're strictly no-till, 
and we're not going to be turning the soil over. And I know it can be done. Um, one of the first years too, when we were in organic and turning the soil over in some of the fields, you know, we bought organic fertilizer, the pebbles. And like, kind of like that idea, I kind of nod. I had to get it all the way from Wisconsin, chick manure. And it kind of felt like I was still doing the same thing, but of course it was organic. So didn't have to worry about the soil health. But over the last couple of years, obviously everyone's probably been raising cover crops. We've been getting more into it. And I realized the realization that cover crops are the answer to get out of doing fertilizer. So that's what we're doing on the farm. And I kind of talked about it, a regen. You know, regen is kind of like a new word. They are, um, you're just trying to get the soil healthier, trying to get everything back in the soil, use it like as a bank. Um, you're just trying to get it healthier. And one of the things I'll be doing is, he kind of talked about two cover crops. I don't know if he did it a whole year, but we're doing like a whole year of cover crop, which we're calling regen, a rest year, because we believe that we can rest the ground with cover crop. You can also do green manure to it to where he does it and some lot of other farmers, they actually turn the soil over to incorporate and get their hand. There's another way to do it. You can do roller crimping, um, terminate at the right time so that you leave the biomass, the plants of out of it on the ground to cover it for suppressing weeds and let the nitrogen build. So that way, when you pull a crop the following year, you pull a cut crop. This is a picture of a, uh, cow peas uh, from some of my regen year. And I was really surprised with all the nodulators that's on that root system. Obviously it's not on every plant, but where there was some soil, we got that. And that's somehow misspelled that word there. Uh, 36 months of uh, going organic, transitional into organic. I know a lot of people wondering, like, I get the question going, well, Wade, if you're going to do 36 months, so that means three year crops that you're going to be in transition. You're going to lose money. You're not going to make it into the organic world. It's going to take you three years. Well, as you were talking about, it's 36 months. It's the last time you spray synthetic fertilizer, chemical, anything prohibited. So if you time it right, you can actually do it where, um, for me instance, we'll do peas and lentils, peas I won't terminate. I'll just naturally combine it. Lentils, I'll terminate it with a paraquat, but you know, that's the end of June or July. So then there's your ticket of the start and window of 36 months. If you wait 36 months in one day, you end up be able to uh, have an organic field. So I'm able to do it in two years. I have transitional ground of a crop or cover crop. In the third year, if I wait that one day past 36 months, it's considered an organic field and harvested. Um, how we're going to manage in weeds is obviously cover crops on the off years or year after harvest, get a cover crop out there. It starts covering the ground, making sure that the biomass gets out there and suppresses the weeds. There's another thing called the weed zapper Did quite a bit of research on it. Cause I was always worried about weeds when I first started getting into the organic wondering what is the best thing to do to control weeds. Cause I don't want to be that farmer out there that lets the weeds go and just get out of control. So we bought something called the weed zapper and there's actually a slide or two after this one. Um, there's another thing I have not bought. I'd love to buy, plan to be buying it, is to terminate uh, weed seeds. And one way to do it is after, or when you're combining, there's an attachment on the back of the combines that actually crushes and kills the weed seeds. You're not throwing it out the back. Another way of doing it is just getting out there and mowing it. Um, I noticed after a pea and lentil harvest, they started getting weeds growing. Luckily this year, they didn't get to the flowering stage. But if they would have, I would have gone out there and swath it, mowed it anyway, so that I just would not create a full seed to drop to the ground and start germination. <laughs> Another thing for me, we don't want to plow. because, Like he was saying, you kind of pop up weed seeds that have been sitting in the ground. So that's where the no-till, the regen, just letting it be to build up the soil. Uh, that's a picture of one of our transitional durums this year. You kind of see some tallness out there. That's actually alfalfa and uh, the weed zapper took care of that. This is the weed zapper. There's only, it's made in Missouri. 
And I just got it this year since we went full blow uh, transitional. We have about a thousand acres that's in the transition, 400 acres that's organic. Uh, next year, we're doing 2,000 acres. And the following year, we'll finish it up and be done. But the thing sends electrical currents on the back is a generator. I know you can't see it. It's 40 feet, 42. Travel four to six miles an hour. It's got a lot of safety features on it. But what I love about it is this is what I was worried about. No killing and um, trying to control the weeds. This took my breath away and, and made it uh, very possible. And I don't know if this video will play. I don't know if you have to hit something on it or not. I can try. Yeah. But this is in my flax field that's actually truly organic. The CRP last year broke it off. Get the field ready. But you see the electrical current on the left side more than the right side. I was going out after alfalfa before the flax got up. And actually one of my agronomists, he called me and said, uh, is that an organic field or is that not organic field? And I said, it's an organic field, why? He said, well, it terminated all your flax, it killed it. And I just want to know if it was that wheat zapper or was it chemical? Because it goes chemical, it can't really, it's one of the hardest um, plants to kill. So that was fun to see an agronomist call me and go, what did you do? And it did a better job than most chemicals. Um, this is transitional Durham, the picture there. Uh, we did weed zap it since I didn't know till. So, I mean, didn't break the ground, just seeded it, stuck the weed zapper to it when it's shorter. And this is what it looks like. But of course, three weeks before harvest, some of it, the weeds finally got up and past the canopy, but stayed that clean and clear. I was pretty happy. Um, this is kind of some of the current prices. Lentils are up there per pound. Cause a lot of people are like, so organic profitable, is it not profitable? I believe it is. Peas, green and yellow are that price. Wheat, and I was wondering about Durham, I couldn't find that out, so it's kind of neat to know. But like I said, Durham was never that high. This is just this year. Flax is over $40. Like he was saying, it's usually 27. And of course, it's just about this year is so dry. Everything is, uh, they're just scrambling to get any kind of bushels conventionally or organic. So I'll be sharing, uh, the next slide is actually um, transitional and conventional. I had a little over 2000 acres of Durham and half of it was transitional. The other half was conventional. And I picked, you know, fields that were all about the same, nothing with high yield and low yield. It's just put it out there and gave it a, an average. Um, we got a grain cart, so we can always keep track of that. But I'll show you realistic numbers on my farm. So my very own comparison on the farm, conventional, the average yield in Gnora was pretty dry, was 20.89. Transitional with no uh, fertilizer chemical was uh, 18.91, just shy of two bushels less. My expenses, did 175 pounds of urea, you got your count, uh, Roundup in crop. And then one other thing that was different was crop insurance was a little bit more money than the transitional side. Cause it's funny, transitional, they have their own level of crop insurance. And then when you get to organic, it's another different level. So that difference alone between a thousand acres was $84 and 17 cents. Um, conventional, you have to do three more passes. Kind of talking about the sprayer, uh, the spreader for transitional, seed it, throw the pro-till in there if you, or uh, it's not pro-till, throw the weed zapper in there or not. So at the end of the day, uh, when I sold, sold everything here, like I said, it was at 80 or $84 and 17 cents cheaper, but you minus the, almost the two bushels that I lost, I gained $52 and 17 cents per acre versus conventional in a transitional world. Now I would be nice if I had organic Durham this year, it wouldn't be that high, but if it was, it'd be really cool. And then on the conventional side, it's getting kind of interesting. I hear urea right now is like 860 and hydrus is like 1300. Roundup's gonna be $45 a gallon or more if you can get it and the other things. And it's gonna be pretty darn expensive to do conventional. Like I said, I got less than two bushels to do transitional. Might be something you might wanna look into it. You can still, the color was great, test weight was great, protein was great. One of the reasons why it was great is uh, both my conventional and transitional came off of all uh, pulses. 
So that was kind of like my end builder. And um, like I said, conventional, you put 175 pounds down, we spread it, we look for rain, we did timely, and less than a two bushel difference, close to two, but it was less. Uh, this is a picture of also uh, brand new breaking. It was CRP, uh, virgin ground. We did, uh, we did set a fire to it last fall and we did disc it uh, just so that we get the ground even because it's got all the virgin potholes and this and that. But everyone said, and I've done this, I broke up so much ground and I've always lose money my very first year conventionally. I've done Durham, I've done lentils, I've done peas. It's always a crop insurance year on that field. I just did it on flax, organic flax, um, with the old price of $27 an early contract. I needed uh, 5.78 bushels to break even, and I did a yield of 9.13, sold it, got paid, then made a profit on it. I really wasn't expecting that, but on a dry year too, I'm in the drought, but that's what we ended up getting, and I was just uh, pretty tickled. And uh, any questions? How have your neighbors kind of perceived the transition process? Have they been? First I talked to, I got two cash renters. I talked to them, told them two years ago or so, what would you think if I went organic on your fields? Uh, one, I knew she'd be all for it. It seems like ladies, moms, they're kind of already there. It's the guys that aren't kind of there yet. She was all for it, yeah, go ahead. Um, talked to the other guy. He was like, yeah, sure. As long as my cash rent's going to be the same. I said, yeah, it's going to be the same. It's not going to be cheaper or lower. And so they were all for it. I am leaving their fields last to transition into organic. I'm just going to make sure I get all my fields up and going and then hop into theirs last. How close are you to being certified? <laughs> well, we got 400 acres that's certified. We got a thousand acres in 2021 or a little over a thousand. That's the transitional stage one. Um, and then next year, 2022, I got to put close to 3,000 acres of dirt. I'm going to do over 2,000 acres of transitional, 1,000 not. I might change it down to 500 because of fertilizer prices. Mild to just go. Because I swear our prices for commodities is going to be high in 2022. And I made money transitional in this year with unexpected high prices going up. Uh, I think we'd, let's just go all in and get it in. So then, so 2022 will be another two. And then 2023 is my last year. Well, actually, not, it'll be transitional. Like I said, I'm selling my sprayer next year in the fall and they'll be done spraying. By 2025, that's when absolutely everything is. But what's kind of cool is this transitional thousand acres that's this year. The following year, I'm planning on doing a pulse crop. I'm going to rest it, do a regen year, uh, build the nitrogen up because then that following year on that first thousand, I'll have good soil and ready to put a yield in and get hopefully a good yield and a good price for organic. So then just the acres just start kind of increasing. So I'm either doing between one third to two thirds transition every year so that I have years of crop that are cover crops and years that's cash crop. So that I always, I'm planning to always do like a cover crop, rest in the ground financially. It's very doable. I mean, we all grew up summer follow. Uh, if you did a continuous crop in on Durham or whatever, you knew the yield was always going to be down here. You had a chemical fallow or summer fallow, and you went in and harvested, it was always 5, 10, 12 bushels higher. So that's kind of what my thinking is, is I'll farm one year, rest one year, farm one year, but of course do it at a 50% level and keep going that way. So I have a question on the cover crop because forage is so short this year and there was a lot of producers looking for fall grazing. Is it a possibility, and maybe Claire can answer this too, could you bring someone's conventional cow herd in? Yeah, good question. Graze? I kind of forgot about that. Yes, for the first year ever, I have that 400 acres I said that's organic. This is my regen year, my pulse year, just letting it be out there. Um, so I have two different farmers or ranchers. They put up their own fencing, not cost to me. They got their cows in there right now eating my cover crops, and I'm getting paid so much a day for each one of the cattle. They're just... I love that they're, they're pooping, their saliva and their urine are the best three things to also build up that organic matter. So then the following year, I'll go in and straight seed it with the no-till, that seeder right there, straight seed some type of crop, pulses or uh, grains or flax, 
I haven't quite decided, but of course you gotta decide early, especially with seed to get in it. But that is a good question. So I'm hoping on the rasters of regen, I got about two or three other people that kind of want to put their cattle on. We'll try to get most of the cattle on all the regen years on most of the ground. If not, oh well, it'll still be pretty good, I believe. 